So you've probably been hearing a lot about this no safety thing coming to Flutter. And you've probably seen the Flutter team pushing a lot of packages and everybody to upgrade to no safety. But what is no safety? Why do you need it? And how do you use it? Coming out right now. Hello friends, my name is Tadis and on this channel we focus on exploring development topics and specifically with Flutter. And today's topic is going to be no safety with Flutter. So there's really two types of Flutter developers. The first type that heard about no safety and were responsible and started using it and learning about it and upgrading their packages, everything with no safety. And then a second type that have procrastinated no safety and are waiting until they're forced to finally use it when they will learn about it. And only then after being forced, they will start using it. So I definitely fall into that second category of people. And that's actually why I'm making this video to force myself to use it and then hopefully teach you guys so you stop being lazy and start using it yourself. So now that I've learned about it, I must say I'm really excited for no safety to come to stable and has become the normal way of development. It makes development a lot safer. It gives us a lot of protection against bad code and just overall will improve your code a lot. So let's go over the main concepts and things to know about null safety. So now when it comes to developing, I feel like a lot of developers have the notion that null is bad and you get a lot of null errors and it makes you frustrated. But in actuality, null is nice. It can actually be really useful when you take care of it and protect your code from it. For example, let's say you're writing some code and you want to have a variable called favorite sport let's say one user doesn't have a favorite sport so you can definitely use null there the next concept is before null safety our variables could actually be two things they could either be the actual variable let's pretend we have a string they could either be a string or they could be null with null safety if you're now defining something as a string it can only be that string but we get another option of a different type of variable a variable that we purposely define as being able to be a variable, for example, string or null. So this makes us conscious of the type of code we're writing. And now if you need something to specifically have a null case, we must define it ourselves. And with those type of variables, the Dart compiler has built in null safety or null protection. So basically, if you have a variable that can be string or null and you're trying to print it without maybe defining it, we get an error before we even compile. So those should explain sort of why we need null safety and how null safety works. And there's one more specific topic I wanna to cover and that's sound null safety. Remember how I said there's two different types of variables? There's one that will for sure be that type of variable and the other one that could be that type of variable or null. So with sound null safety, we can guarantee that 100% of the time that string variable, if we don't define it to be null safe, it will always be a variable. Now you think that'd be the norm, but there's actually only one other language that does that right now and that's Swift. And the benefit that gives us is it makes our code faster. The compiler doesn't have to do null checks on stuff that we have not specifically defined that it can have the option of null. So sound null safety guarantees us 100% that the variable will either be nullable or non-nullable. And there's nothing in between. So now there's a couple keywords and new operands that we can use to work with null safety and to make our code a little bit easier. There's four of them total. Let's go through them one by one. So the question mark, we've had the question mark before in our apps, but now if you put it right after the variable name, it will tell us whether it is nullable or non-nullable. So the non-nullable, which means it will 100% be a string, it's this one, which is what we will probably be using most of the time, just like we are now. But then if we do want it to have the null case, we put a question mark right after the string, and now we have a nullable string. So if we have a name constructor with a value that we actually need, so a value of this type, which is non-nullable, you will need to use a keyword required in the constructor to let whoever is creating that object to know that this stuff is required. Then we have the late keyword, which is used for non-nullable types. And this basically lets you know that we're gonna define this later. Now with a nullable type, that's no problem. You're already allowed to define it later. But with non-knowable types, if we want to define it later, but before it is used, then we need to use the late keyword. I'll show an example in the code. It should be easier to understand. And then the last one is the bang operator. This pretty much tells the compiler to get away and let me handle this. You're basically saying, I know that this for sure will not be null at this point in the app. So don't give me the error. All right, so here we have the basic code that you've probably used in your apps already. We have a class called person with a string for their name and a string for their favorite sport. Now, this looks like code that you wrote back in the day, but the key thing here is these cannot be null. So if we change this basketball to null, you'll see we get an error saying argument cannot be null since it is assigned to string. Now, if we put this question mark right after the string, you'll see that problem will go away. This can be null and we have no issues. That's the key thing right there for null safety pretty much making sure your variables can either be null or they can't be null. If they can't be, whenever a case happens where your variable could be null, the compiler is gonna shoot out an error for you. Okay, now remember, 
the required keyword. So if you use name constructor, you'll see that you get an error here. The error says the parameter name can't have a value of null because of its type. Since name parameters mean they are optional, this is not really a legal way to write code. You're saying this optional one can be stored into something that can't be null. To fix that, we add the required keyword that you saw. Now we're saying this entry is a required entry so that we can meet that condition that the name value variable will not be null. We see since we our string is a nullable type, we can remove it. We have no problems here. And then if we don't have the name, you will see an issue here pop up that this name field is required. All right, so I just pasted in some code. Remember, there was two more keywords, the late keyword and then the bang operator. Just as a warning, you should use these as little as possible. They are overriding what the compiler provides for you. And most of the time the compiler will probably be right, but there are definitely cases where you might know more than the compiler and you just want to tell it to, you know, mind its own business. This is a potential issue we can see. For this function, we want to pass in a string, which is not nullable. This needs to have something that's not null in here. But here, our string is nullable and we're passing it here with a potential null. We'll see the problem, the argument, nullable string cannot be assigned to parameter type string. That's pretty much saying this can be null and we do not want to pass that. So how do you fix it? The first way to handle this is just to do a null check before you even call the function. Now hopefully that's the type of stuff that you're already doing in your app. The second way is something you might have already been doing. If it is null, then you can return some other string. But now the last way you could actually do it is you overwrite it with an exclamation point. So this is saying at this point, I certify that the current name will not be null and to just pass it. Now the code we're writing obviously means we made a mistake here. You'll see we have a script error because at this point it is null. A scenario you would use this in is let's say you have a Firebase call right here and you're calling your Firebase application and you know 100% sure that you will always have something in the current name field so you're certain that you can pass it with a bang operator. Now the late keyword comes in handy in a separate scenario. For this example, we're gonna import the Dart math library. And here we're gonna see a separate scenario. So we have a string, but it can't be null. And we have a random function that executes sometimes and potentially will give us the return of the name Tadis and we'll be okay. But you'll notice our compiler is complaining that this non-knowable variable must be assigned before it's used. In this case, it won't always be assigned for sure. Again, using the late keyword, we can make that error go away. And we're gonna for sure assign it later before we use it. With this keyword, you're telling the compiler, just trust me, I know what I'm doing this will be set later and don't worry about it but it still catches stuff like this in case there's nowhere that it can possibly assign it it'll still give you an error so it'll protect you a little bit but definitely less than it does normally now in cases like this i'd say we call firebase here for some boolean type when we know it, it will always be true then we just tell the string that we'll assign it later for sure and to not worry about it. The bang operator is used for nullable types to let them know that it will for sure not be nullable at that point. And the late keyword is for non-nullable types, letting the compiler know that I will for sure declare it at a later point. There we go. I hope that simple code helped explain it a little bit. Now Dart actually provides a migration tool. So if you have a complete app that you've already built and you're not looking forward to upgrading into null safety, first, I recommend you definitely do because it'll make your code base a little nicer and safer. But two, there's also a migration tool that Dart provides. So it kind of does that automatically for you. And then you have to just go check through to make sure it did it right. I will link this article in the description. So make sure to check that out and hopefully migrate your apps to be better. As far as when it's coming, my bet is on the March 3rd event. It should come to stable and then everybody will be using it. And hopefully our apps will become a lot better. So that's it for this video. If you want a longer, more in-depth video, there's a link in the description. So make sure to check that out. If you want some more Flutter videos from me, there should be a couple cards popping up here. But thank you for watching this one. Make sure to like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed it. And see you next time.